This video will discuss problem number five from the 2024 AP Calc BC exam. Usually in spot five within a BC FRQ set, you've got a problem that has some tasks within it that you would have considered Calc AB content. And then you've got other tasks that are considered Calc BC. And that is exactly what's going on with number five from 2024. So the setup for this one, they give us this table of values. So at these x's, we know the value of f prime. And they tell us that this function f is twice differentiable for all x's and that f of 0 is 0. We've got selected values of f prime given in the table. Part a asks us to consider x being bigger than 0 for the function h and defining h like this. So the definite integral from 0 to x of the square root of 1 plus f prime of t squared with respect to t. We're asked to find the value of h prime of pi. Show the work that leads to your answer. So you've likely done quite a bit of this as you've gone throughout your AP calculus preparation. This is going to be an application of the fundamental theorem of calculus. We want to take the derivative of this definite integral with respect to its upper limit of integration. What we're going to do in order to make that happen is we're going to copy the integrand, we're going to replace the t with that upper limit of integration, and there's no need to use a chain rule or anything fancy here. Uh, that's all there is to it. So essentially the derivative of this type of definite integral, those processes undo one another. Here's h prime of x. We need to evaluate h prime of pi. So we put a pi in place of this x. You would recognize that f prime of pi is now needed. That's something you can get from the table. They tell us that that is 6. This right here would receive full credit. If you do simplify it, it's not too difficult to do it. Uh, but you would end up with the square root of 37. Part B is now asking us what information does this integral, so it's structured very similarly to how the integral was in part A, what does this integral give us about the graph of f? So hopefully you'd recognize this as the arc length or curve length formula from Calc BC, uh, and it would be the curve length of f of x on the interval from 0 to pi. So that's a pretty short and sweet response. You hopefully recognize the formula, you answer this part of the question, and you're moving on to part C. Part C is asking us to use Euler's method starting at x equals 0, two steps of equal size, to approximate f of 2 pi. Show the computations that lead to your answer. So I typically like to structure my work in table form. So I'm starting at x equals 0. I know the y value at x equals 0 is 0, right? That was indicated right back here. If I'm going with two steps of equal size, from 0 to 2 pi, my first step is going to go from 0 to pi, and my second step is going to go from pi to 2 pi. Now the way that I get this approximate function value at pi is by applying Euler's method. So I have from my classroom notes a formula for Euler's method here, and we're going to generate the next y. This might be off the bottom of the screen, but that says next y. We're going to generate our next y by taking the current y. So our current y, if we only know this ordered pair at the moment, our current y is 0. I'm going to add on whatever my step size is, and I'm going to multiply that step size by the slope of my tangent line at that currently completed ordered pair. So I'm taking the y that I know to estimate f of pi, the y that I know previously is 0. I'm adding on the value of the slope of the tangent line at that previous ordered pair. So the slope of the tangent line at 0, comma 0 is 5. And then I'm multiplying by my step size. My step size, I'm going up by units of pi in this column over here. So I get 0 plus 5 times pi, or 5 pi, as my estimate for the function value at pi but I want the, the est, my estimate to be the function value at 2 pi. So I go with one more round of Euler's method. This is now my currently completed ordered pair. So I'm going to take my current y value. I'm going to add on the slope of the tangent line at that pi comma 5 pi ordered pair, and then multiply by my step size. So the slope of the tangent line at pi comma 5 pi is going to be 6. 
right, the value of the derivative at pi. So I get 5 pi plus 6 pi. That would receive full credit. That's pretty easy to simplify. You end up with 11 pi as your estimate for f of 2 pi. And then the last part of this is, seems kind of random, right? It doesn't really involve the table or the function or anything. It's just kind of a random task that they throw in here at the end. Uh, they ask us to find the antiderivative of this and to show the work that leads to your answer. Now, hopefully you look at the structure of this t plus 5 times cosine of t over 4. It's obviously multiplication. You might consider to try to do a u substitution. You're Probably your only option for that would be to let u equal what's in this set of parentheses. I don't think you'd really likely consider anything else for u. So you hopefully rule that off, rule that out as a method pretty quickly. It is a product. So in Calc BC, you've talked about integration by parts. So for integration by parts, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to assign u and dv. And if you let u equal t plus 5, and you let dv equal cosine of t over 4, or cosine of 1 fourth t, to find what du is, you take the derivative of both sides of this, derivative of t plus 5 with respect to t is 1, so du would be equal to dt, and then I need to use this to go back to v, so I'm going to have to take the antiderivative of this to go back to v. So when I do the antiderivative over here, I do have an inner function of 1 fourth w, or 1 fourth t, excuse me. So over here I define w, and I only use w instead of u because I was already using u in my integration by parts assignment, so I didn't necessarily want to do a u substitution, so I just kind of, to avoid confusion, used a different variable completely. So w is going to equal this inner function, that derivative is going to be equal to 1 fourth, and so dt is going to be able to be replaced with 4 dw. So I am going to pick up a factor of 4 in my antiderivative, and then the antiderivative of cosine is sine, and then I've got the inner function back into that right away. So now I'm gonna carry out my process for integration by parts. So I've got u times v showing up right here, minus v, so that's everything inside the integral here, and then du is just dt. So I do have something here that it seems like I should be able to do the antiderivative of. That's the whole point of integration by parts. I am going to need to do another substitution for this. And it's actually the same exact substitution that we did back here. If I let w equal 1 fourth t, my derivative is 1 fourth. 4 times dw is what dt is going to equal. So I'm going to pick up an additional factor of 4 when I do this antiderivative. So this 4 is going to get multiplied by another 4 and become 16. The reason why I switched the sign, S-I-G-N sign, from subtraction to addition or negative to positive is because the antiderivative of S-I-N sign is negative cosine. So I just kind of simplified on the fly there. I back substituted and I had my antiderivative.